We're talking snap clips, high sticking versus low sticking, and why the boat and kayak are now decked out with Lorance gear. Now, let's get into it. On a recent video I did where I caught one fish on every color of the Daiwa Slippery Dog Lure. It's a top water walk the dog lure. There's a video up there if you're interested in watching that. But a lot of you guys asked about clips in that video. You'll notice that I used a snap clip on the front of my lures there. Now, I rigged that up because of convenience. I had 12 odd lures to go through and I was being lazy. Ultimately, it's one of those examples where I wasn't practicing what I preach. So today I'm gonna to cover off why I don't like clips as a bit of a standard. The first is more so not about the clip itself, it's about your skill set. Now, I really like to retie my leader every time I get a new lure. Now, I know that could be cumbersome at first, particularly when you're getting into it, you're learning your knots, it's just taking a little while, particularly in the wind, if it's wet, it can be a little bit difficult. But I'd urge you to push through that. If you don't push through that, you'll end up in six months time as a, you know, an okay fisherman that relies on clips constantly, that's no good at knots. That skill set in your fishing will be a little bit deficient. And that's the situation I found myself in. I used them for around about 12 to 18 months when I first got into it. And then 12 months later, after I'd been fishing, you know, most weekends, I went and I had a look and you know, the basic knots were still taking me ages to do. So I'd recommend you just take some time and get involved in that bad boy there. Invest in learning and practicing those knots over and over so that on the water, they are quicker. I will mention as well that clips aren't designed for every lure, but more on that in a sec. The second reason I really like to retie my leader line is because I get to refresh the, you know, the five to two inches odd of line immediately prior to the lure. I can, that little portion of your terminal tackle, that portion of your leader gets hammered more than any other bit of your lure, aside from yes, the lure that, you know, might be in the fish's mouth, but that bit of leader is going to smash up against you know mooring ropes or rocks it's going to rub against the weed as the lure cuts through it if you fish in a cranky crab you know it might wrap around the pole now we've all seen it we've all seen that little bit right in front of the lure get frayed so tying a new lure on is a great opportunity to refresh that line i actually suffered in the fish in every color video because i lost one of the fish on uh, i don't quite remember what color it was but i lost the fish and i attribute that to the leader. The leader was nice and frayed. I should have been using uh, a loop knot. The third, and I mentioned this already, is that not every lure is designed to have a clip on the front of it. And if I could use, let's say, a bent minnow, for example, this one's still in the pack, but if you guys look at a bent minnow here, you'll see that it's got a silver kind of um, snap clip on the front of it. Now, it is lightweight. That material is, is really quite good by OSP. They've done a really nice job of that clip. But you'll notice that when the bent minnow sits in the water, this one doesn't have the clip on it, but when it sits in the water, it floats something looking like that. The clip will be off the front of it, and the clip will be below the lure. It'll, it will follow the natural flow of how the lure is meant to go, and the clip will be sunk ever so slightly. That's the manufacturer really telling you that they would like their lure, or, or that is how they would like their lure rigged. That lure is now designed to go downward whenever the uh, attachment or a pull is applied to or pressure is applied to the line. The natural tendency is to go downward. Now, we know that the bent minnow jumps around and mucks around, but the manufacturer is really speaking to us when they add or don't add a clip in the box. If we take the Daiwa Slippery Dog or the Sugar Pen or the Bass Day Sugar Pen, those don't come with lips or split rings or anything on the front. And initially I thought, ah, oh, you know, that might be the brand being a little bit cheap and trying to save some money. That's totally not the case because if you look at other uh, uh, lures in their range, I don't have one on me right now, but the double clutch, for example, the double clutch has a split ring kind of clip on the front. 
it costs 20 cents. They're not trying to save or cheat us out of their gear by not adding it. What they're actually doing is telling us that they would like a loop not added to the front of their lure. If I take this bad boy here, we know that from their marketing data that they've sent out that uh, these tungsten ball bearings at the back are uh, one of the key features of the lure and they want that lure to sit like this in the water column, that is nose out. If we add a weight to the front of that, you're going to hinder that brand's concept of how the lure might work. And what we mean by that is it, will pro it, it might change from sitting like this to then you know, sitting something like that. Now that's a bit of extreme. It depends on how big the clip is that you add to the front, obviously. But what Dyer are telling us with this lure or Baste are telling us with that lure is that they like that nose, that, that mouth to sit open at the top of the lure, at the top of the water there, so that when you pull the lure, the line or the lure is pushed upwards and outwards and remains at the surface. Vice, the bent minnow that goes down and into the water. Some lures you'll find that they come with the clips or the split rings. In those spaces, I just add a blood knot to the front where my lures don't have any clips or split rings on the front straight out of the pack, straight out of the, from the manufacturer, I will use a split ring. So the last point is the strength degradation argument of having a clip on the line. You know, if you are using a clip over and over and over and over and over, you know, you are flexing that metal over and over and over and over and over. And by the end of the day, the clip might actually be weaker than it was at the start of the day. That's one argument. Oh, I'm a bit 50-50 on that one. And I don't really remember that being an issue when I first started. I guess to expand on the argument, the point that I will mention is probably valid is by using an additional clip, you are adding another point of failure, I guess, in the line. So if it's not the line, then it's the clip. If you have the opportunity to remove a couple of those links out so that you are a direct contact, well, I definitely consider them. <laughs> so another question came out about working a service lure on a high stick or working it with a low stick. Now, there's no real hard and fast rules. Probably one of those things that I vary up depending on the day, but, but I like to think about it like this. If the lure is a prawn pattern lure, I'll generally high stick it and keep it at the top of the water. Like a prawn would be skipping across the top. If it's a lure that's been painted like a bait fish, I might low stick it a little bit more and punch it through the water a bit more like a submarine. You know, that'll create a bit of commotion, a bit of boil around it. The bait fish is still representing a bait fish. It's representing more of a bait fish than maybe a prawn. Now, of course, this isn't a hard and fast rule. Sometimes fish just like some sort of activity more than the other. And this is something that I'll vary up. Personally, I like the idea of a lure hitting the surface, high sticking it to get a lot of attention. And then once the fish come in, then tapping it down. I've mentioned that technique before on a few other videos. It's really one of those variables that you can play with. If you're finding lots of low sticking doesn't work for you, well then go high stick, no big deal. Lastly, I want to keep you guys informed about some pretty exciting stuff that's happening with the gear that I've got and the reviews that are coming out. So the boat, which is behind the camera here, and the kayak, which is down over there in pieces, are both being decked out with full suites of Lowrance products from the Garmin Ghost up the front to the Active Target. We've got units going in uh, the front and the rear and obviously the kayak as well with uh, three in one transducers. Now, first of all, don't worry, the reviews on these products will still be impartial. We had to pay for them, but I do want to thank HWS for making these uh, products are much more affordable so that I can produce the content for you guys. Navico, who are like the parent company for Lawrence and the importers, are also helping with a giveaway, which will be nice, but the conditions of all the review are that we're gonna stay impartial. We're gonna talk about the strengths and we're gonna talk about some constructive stuff with the Lorenz products. After all of that is done, we will then gut both the boat and the kayak down there 
and we will look at another brand. Probably, I guess, in six months' time or so. Please don't think we're getting this stuff for free. It's costing us an arm and a leg, but we figure, you know, you guys will be interested in this content, so we're gonna go do it. A few of you guys have also mentioned and messaged me, referenced the Daiwa kind of space that we've seen on this channel in the last six months. Big picture, they've released some pretty nice stuff, but they've also provided this channel with a bunch of opportunities to review it. So they have got a bunch of airtime because of it. We just haven't been given the opportunities like we have with Daiwa from other companies. I hope the channel builds and we get the opportunity out in future. What we do have coming is a Cranker Minnow review. So we've got one of every color up there. That'll be a giveaway to come soon. And we're gonna break the lure down like we usually do. Anyway, this was meant to be a quick one. Hope you enjoyed the ideas on the snap clips, the high sticking, the low sticking, and what's going on with the channel. Hope you enjoy the video. Stay safe. I'll see you next time.